uh, during the business amidst these uncertain times. Hiring for some industries is, is essential right now. For example, some companies with logistics and online delivery sectors are recruiting thousands of staff to keep up with the surge in online orders amid the coronavirus outbreak. So is virtually onboarding really that different? Well, the easy answer is yes, it really, really is, especially from my own experience. Onboarding is usually conducted in, generally by most organizations in several face-to-face -face meetings, whether you're in logistics, services, um, or retail, right? It's all done face-to-face, -face, right? It gives you that human kind of touch point, <clears throat> gets you to help you uh, mint and understand the culture of the organization, okay? Um, the hiring process usually includes several one-to-one -one meetings with HR, hiring managers, and other employee groups. So this really opens up a whole bunch of questions in this new virtual world, such as, is HR prepared to be flexible and adapt to adopt successful virtual onboarding processes? So let's explore some of the key steps to help develop and implement successful virtual onboarding. Now, as I mentioned before, this is from my own experience. Feel free to add any questions um, at the end uh, or, or sign off if you already feel like you've, um, you've covered this content within your company or your, or, or, your, or your role. Okay, first point, you need to educate your teams on best virtual practices for virtual onboarding. This is really, really, really important. Before you can even start interviewing your HR team, your recruitment specialists, whoever's involved, your hiring managers, they need to understand your process for hiring people online. Now, give it may be, it may be the fact this is the first time you've done this, that's great. To call it a bit of an experiment, you're gonna learn as you go, but you've gotta write down some sort of strategy or plan it's going to help you implement staff. Um, it, it's really important. In fact, it's one of the first cogs in the process is to make sure your HR team has a solid process in place for virtual onboarding. Either give your HR team the task of creating this process or provide them with the intelligence to do this. You will also need to find a way to create a collaboration and training program for all your staff members involved in your hiring process. This would usually start with, say, your HR um, team, providing the initial training to your key party members followed by regular weekly or monthly collaboration calls to see what improvements you can make on that process. That's really, really important guys. It, it, it's absolutely essential. Um, you really, as an employee or a potential employee, you don't really feel the culture of an organization until you go and meet your team members. And yeah, it's great. You've got Zoom and I get all of that and that's fantastic. And you get to immense yourself virtually with your, with your hiring potential, you know, organization that you're going to work for. Um, but it's really, really different. So having a process in place that's seamless and works and your employees, potential employees or employees understand, will make the whole process pain free. Next point, provide your onboarding employees with the right guidance. This is absolutely essential. I've personally gone through so many weird experiences, let's call it that, in my previous hiring times when I was virtually onboarded for the first few interviews. Now, just as some, uh, some, some intelligence that I uh, sourced from the web, from Harvard Business Report, according to a report, and um, this is actually from Forbes, 20% of all new hires resign within the first 45 days. So why is that? Well, there's a number of factors involved, but as from, I'm sure you can imagine, it is even more critical to get the right experience correct, to get the experience correct, the onboarding experience during the virtual, um, during that onboarding session, right? For employees who are being interviewed virtually, it is critical that you provide a detailed onboarding guide. So when they first come in for that interview or they first conduct that interview with HR, uh, maybe the first one, it, it, there's no need to have a guide, but maybe just give a bit of an idea on what the role is and that sort of stuff. And if you pass <clears throat> that initial onboarding experience, then I think it's important that the HR manager gives a bit of an idea or emails even the, the process that they would follow at each step of that interview process to make sure they understand what it looks like. Because there's nothing more than being nothing more horrific than being left in the loop, which happens a lot in recruitment. Um, I get it. You know, I've been a part of large and small organizations. I run my own business now. Sometimes you leave employees, potential employees that you've interviewed in the lurch because you've got someone internally that you want and you want to keep someone as a backup. Great. I 100% get that. Um, but keep your employees um, 
updated on that you know just 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 let them know they've got other candidates and you'll update them weekly even if it's a call or an email say hey you know we're still going through the process you're definitely still on our list um give us a bit of time and we'll come back to you with some feedback that, that, that's all people are asking for right i mean i've had experiences where i was on board by contractual large global tech companies and i was put through to contractual companies to help me on board where they were outsourced and the experience was very it, it was very painful um, and it caused me to, to, to drop out of one um, sort of employment uh, which was done virtually uh, a few years ago just because the whole process was mismanaged and it just didn't feel that nice but I've had plenty of other virtual onboarding experiences prior to face-to-face -face, which have just been fantastic really warming proper guides and guidance given so yeah um, but at the end of the day look your successful candidates <clears throat> and even your potential candidates will require much more intelligence to make sure uh, in this new virtual world to make sure that their onboarding process is pain-free and successful. Uh, once an offer has successfully been made, your HR team must set up a webinar to outline every single process required for the onboarding. Really, really important. Um, sorry, guys, let me just jump back a couple of steps. Um, this is important. They've got to understand what that process involves, who they're going to talk to. Um, they've given, if they've been given a new role, here's the contract and here's the roadmap of everyone. They're not going to get the opportunity to sit in the office and, and network like they used to. So go around, oh, who, who manages that team? I wouldn't mind you know, having a coffee with them. That's kind of out of the question. I mean, let's face it, at least the next few weeks, maybe a few months. Um, you, you've got to be able to have a, a, some sort of visibility on who manages who in the company and who you should be speaking to and who perhaps you could reach out to in the future when, when, when appropriate. That's really, really important. And this should be provided by in writing as well to, um, <clears throat> to assist your employees. Okay, moving on to the next step. Streamline the number of onboarding activities. I can't stress enough how important this is onboarding employees or interviews or whatever it is is generally too intense any right it's just too intense it needs to be much more streamlined um, it really requires the discipline to have a process that is streamlined especially for virtual onboarding you know go from 20 steps to 10 steps if you can you know eliminate those complicated steps if, if step one is the HR interview via virtual webinar great if step two is the hiring manager and step three is a let's say it's a um uh, some sort of uh, I guess test that you have to do aptitude test great step four is the interview with someone else and maybe step five is your final interview it doesn't need to be a 10 20 step process especially virtually and every one of those steps has to be articulated to your potential staff or onboarding staff so they understand what those steps involve because you know quite often you'll find employee potential employees definitely have a number of options on the table and if they feel or I've personally gone through this if they feel that the interview process is just too confusing they're going to feel a little bit anxious and think well hang on a minute i haven't heard back for a while um what does this mean and then you try and reach out to the hiring manager they don't come back to you i've gone through this a number of times i had three um i had a couple of job offers on the table but i was waiting for this one company to come back to me sent a couple of interviews to the recruitment specialist heard nothing just assumed the worst as you do so okay well, obviously it's not not for me um but large companies are complex they get held up with things processes and whatnot the only thing that was lacking there was a lack of communication to tell me that i was still in the mix and anyway, i accepted a role and then i found out about this was about about three or four years ago now that I um that I was <laughs> I had been accepted in this large tech vendor company and I'm like oh okay wow but I'd already taken another role and I said look Tom thanks for the time I just gave them some feedback and they were very apologetic and they actually agreed to take that on board and um, I had a couple of calls from the hiring manager to apologize as well and, and just to stay in touch with them that that's a great company in my opinion to, to actually to, to accept the fact that they could have done the uh, process a little bit better that, that was fantastic but at the same time you know they lost out I lost out and they lost out on hiring a potentially great a great employee for their organization just because of a, a small communication breakdown as per se that could have been added as part of a simple process right so according to Saplin the average new hire has 54 activities to complete during the onboarding process now that, that's insane that's 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 so many so companies just need to ensure that the onboarding process program does not cause stress anxiety as I mentioned before self-doubt um, any of these could turn issues with if you've got a new employee early turnover rates or if you've got a uh, potential employee dropouts from the from the actual interview and the interview process itself so a couple of tips here HR professionals need to balance the process against the employees personal motivations and learning behaviors okay and base what is required on the individual 
treat every candidate individually. For example, not every candidate will require free interviews with three separate hiring managers. Some will, maybe some more junior staff or graduates require a more stringent recruitment process. I get it. Uh, someone that's, come out, that's coming in with 10 years experience, bringing in all their contacts, might only need two or three, refer, two or three interviews rather than someone that comes in from a, a referral from a good friend might need one or two, okay? Um, it makes it a little bit more streamlined and it's a bit more professional for them as well. Um, use online scheduling software such as LinkedIn, uh, Captera, Scoro, uh, centric HR are some of the ones that I've come across in the past. Microsoft Teams is good. Uh, Zoom has had its problems in the past. Hey, I love Zoom. I know they've had issues, but there's certain things you can do with Zoom uh, when you're onboarding staff or running virtual calls just to make sure that it's safe, such as ex doing a manual acceptance of the individuals that are going to join and adding a password as well. It's, it's a very great tool. Zoom is one of my favorite because it has the least amount of problems, whereas GoToMeeting and others, as great as they are, I, I've used them. Nothing majorly but negative to say about them. Zoom has its problems as well, but my preference is Zoom. It's so pain-free easy to use and I've never had issues generally don't have any issues with anyone joining it um, downloading software or anything like that so just on a final point keep your meetings as focused engaged and productive as possible moving on step three take advantage of digital tools to help streamline your onboarding process I'm actually missing a step here um, no, I'm not. Very good. That's just me in the presentation. That's okay. Schoolboy error. Point taken. Point four. Take advantage of digital tools to help streamline your onboarding process. Okay. It is easy for your employees to feel physically distanced from their team members and key leaders, which makes it very easy for your staff to feel alone and isolated. Okay, new hires would be more at risk from this as they have not yet learned about the company, formed relationships, or one of the most important aspects I believe is, is actually immersing themselves in, into the corporate culture, right? Corporate culture, very important. It usually takes a long time to, to learn the corporate culture, but you do get a feel of it in the onboarding process. So use digital communication tools like they're going out of fashion. I mean, as leaders, you need to be collaborating with your teams on a regular basis. Set regular catch-up calls internally between your various teams and staff. That's more on the hiring process itself and the feedback and what people, what you feel isn't working, what is working, what your potential employees or onboarding employees feedback, is, they're, what they're giving to you. Make sure that's documented somewhere so, so the process can be improved by HR uh, in the future. Make sure your staff also have the flexibility to be spontaneous and don't let them feel they have to set up a Zoom call or webinar call just to speak to their leads or direct team. This is really, really important. Um, we need to make the working conditions feel as normal as possible. We're picking up the phone and calling someone or dialing someone on Skype can be the same as just walking over to your colleague physically and giving them a pat on the back or a slap on the head or, or a flick on the ear, whatever, whatever your preference is. Say, hey, mate, you know, what, what, you know, I've got a question for you. Hey, how, how's your day going? You, know, you want a coffee? You know, just be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, mate, you know, I know it's not the same and it never will be the same as that, but just, just be spontaneous. Get your staff to feel they can have the flexibility to do that and pick up the phone and say, I need to call someone. And that person might be busy. They may not answer. They might say they're busy. That's cool. Um, just like in the real world, when you, when you uh, hit someone on the back and say, hey, you've got a question? They say, hey, I'm, I'm busy making my calls or I'm, I'm busy busy at the moment with some admin. And, that, and that's fine. But you want to make it spontaneous. You don't want every staff member just setting up Zoom calls. Oh, I need to set up a Zoom call to, to get this question answered. Let's do that Tuesday at 3 p.m. Really? Okay, people are busy. But if you could just send a quick email, I'll pick up the phone and go, hey, Mike, James, Sharon. Uh, quick question for you guys. Um, you know, what does this mean if this particular report me is set to this or whatever? Oh, yeah, great. That answers my question. 10 seconds, boom, done. Use your phone. It's, it's your best friend, okay? Pick up the phone and call people. Create multiple new channels within your internal communication platform to help engage your globally dispersed, dispersed workforce. Utilize tools, as I've mentioned before, Microsoft Teams, shared training programs, Zoom, Salesforce Chatter. There are so many tools out there. Zendesk, well, that's, I guess that's for Zendesk for your potential clients, but there's so many tools that you guys can use to help onboard new staff members, to help your potential staff members in interviews to feel more comfortable with the process. Take advantage of those, really, really important. Your employees will need to forge a shared community that's all about embracing their true selves and helping each other out. 
by enabling social collaboration within your company, you are reducing the risk of employees going to what I like to call self-isolation, where they kind of run an extrovert or introvert, it doesn't really matter, but helping them to break through the social um, virtual barrier to success, right? So, you know, you get this this risk, and I, I personally, in the last few weeks, um, experienced this when you kind of go into isolation and go, oh, well, I'm not in the office, so I'm just going to go and make some toast now. I'm going to go and just go for a walk. Well, not walk. We can't do that at the moment. Go for a drive. I'm just going to go and lie down for 20 minutes because, you know, I can. You lose that sense of discipline, right? So you've got to be extremely disciplined and mature to be working from home. And anyone, and I feel I'm pretty mature and disciplined running a company. You have to be. Otherwise, you know, you're only you're going to be failing at what you do, um, especially as a business owner. If you don't make money, you don't eat. You don't make money, you don't pay your employees. But even with all of that, it's still easy to fall back into your lazy habits. So just be aware that your employees will do the same and make sure you've got things in place to keep them A, motivated, B, disciplined, and C, focused. Really, really important. Now, audience, I'm going to go back on myself because it looks like I stuffed up the um, presentation. I want to make sure I've covered all the points. So we've covered streamlining the number of onboarding activities. We've looked at some of the digital tools to help streamline your onboarding process, providing your onboarding employees with the right guidance, extremely important. We've covered that and educating your team. So we've covered all the main points here. So look, just sort of in conclusion, and we'll go and, we'll go and open up the floor to questions in, in, in a few minutes. This has got a little bit quick, um, which is a good thing. Um, but if you, anyone has any questions, feel free to let me know at any time. But just in conclusion, ultimately one of the biggest challenges with onboarding new employees remotely is the lack of face-to-face -face interaction, which can, can cause confusion and make the experience just seem extremely unhuman. Uh, it can be very difficult for your new staff to experience your corporate culture virtually in the same way if the physical environment can. That's a massive one. I remember joining some of these, the biggest tech companies in the world and, and some of the biggest things you'll see like you know, some of you work out which companies these are, but the, the blue box and the, the red box logos, you go, wow, that really resonates with that with that company. Wow, here's some, you know, here's a ball, or here's a speaker, or here's a mouse, or here's some pat you know, paper, here's a, a training process that's gonna take me two weeks and might bore me to death, but wow, they've got everything in place. This is a great culture, this is a culture of people, or this is a culture that, um, that really enables training and enables me to be successful, or whatever it is, right? You really see it hand in hand when you're face to face and you're, and you're with these people, and you do see it virtually as well, but it's really, really hard, in my opinion, to, to experience it in the same way. So in final conclusion, if your organization and your company has the right processes in place to virtually onboard new employees with streamlined steps and a team of corporate experts at hand, so that's your HR team, that are trained to manage this process effectively, then you should have minimal issues onboarding new staff virtually, okay? Really important, get a process in place document that process. Make sure there's different versions of that process. Maybe one for your CEOs and CW executives, one for your HR team, one for your onboarding team. Onboarding can be HR, sorry, it can be HR sales or marketing and each one of those is different. So make sure it's tailored to each of those and make sure there's a place where you guys can collaborate internally as a company to, to comment on what's working and what's not. Or even just, you know, I had this interview with this great candidate, but he seemed to really switch off about the culture and we're not sure why. Maybe we need to change this. Just so you guys can collaborate and create that process, right? You also need to create something that is really solid for your employees or, or onboarding employees slash interviewed employees, right? Pending interviews because they need to understand the process as well. The more they can understand the process, the more comfortable they're going to feel. Interviewing is extremely stressful on, on its own, right? And they might just put people off, especially millennials. Uh, millennials in this day and age, they might be put off by that, not having a, a documented process. But even more, just, just, just onboarding employees that have got the job, you've gone through all the costs of getting them on board. Um, last thing you want is for them to drop off in the first couple of months because they felt the onboarding process was unprofessional or just not correctly um, set up communication wasn't set up the right way all that sort of stuff so yeah that, that that's my sort of key takeaways from this but look in this new world we have to make this work we just have to we don't know how long COVID-19 is going to last for we're all moving forward some of us have experienced extreme hardship from this we've lost jobs Other, others of us have had to streamline our businesses to work from home uh, in, a, in, in a way that we've never done before in, in, in many different countries with different infrastructure and infrastructure that works doesn't work it's very challenging and um and speaking from personal experience, that's 
something that I've personally gone through. We're going to get through this. You know, we can scale up and scale down as much as we want. We can make this last six months to a year, but I know I want my business to grow. And if that means for the next year, we've got to do it virtually. Well, we'll do it virtually and we'll make it work. All right. We'll make it work and we'll grow and we'll get through this. The world will certainly never be the same again after this. Uh, and just, just speaking from, my own experience, it, it can't be, right? It'll be very different. We're all keen to get out of this lockdown, um, but the economy has got some, got some mending to go. And are we on pause? And does this mean there's worse to come? Who knows, right? Maybe, you know, after this, things will start improving. We'll just have to see how we go. Look, I'm going to open the uh, floor to questions. I want to thank everyone for participating today. Okay, so if anyone's got any questions, please let me know. You can, you can message me using the Messenger um, message function. I'll just open that up now. Okay. So a question coming through from Mike. Mike is asking um, the best approach or the best sort of guide or if I can do some sort of guide on, uh, you know, on prov what, what you can provide to employees to bring them on board. That, that, that's a really good question, actually. I've never personally actually been given a physical guide to um, the interviewing process, let's say, onboarding sometimes, but it's always a little bit fuzzy and vague. But for the interviewing process, yeah, look, you know, set up the interview, you, uh, the HR, you know, manager gives an idea of the role, uh, sends out what the role is and asks them if anything required from the interview. The HR individual then interviews that person. They, they pass a certain process that that HR individual is happy with. And that HR individual should then document the process from there. It doesn't matter if the candidate is successful or not. You're not giving away confidential information. Just say, look, if you're successful after this, Matt or uh, Mike or James. Step two will be an interview with the hiring manager. If you're successful with that, then there'll be an interview, and you could be vague a little bit, will be an interview with one of the other hiring managers. We're not sure who that is yet, but there'll be a two step process after this to get you on board, and then there'll be a final interview with your C with our CEO. In each of these interview processes, you'll be asked to do a case study on this. You'll be asked to announce up to your test that will involve this. I'll send you an email on what that looks like. You know, good luck in your next interview, right? I think that's the way to do it. Um, for and then once they come on board and they're you know they successfully gone through and, and and after sorry taking a step back and mumbling on my words a bit, but after each stage, you as an HR individual should be sending out 100% the next steps again. So you might have covered that over the call and send an email. Send another email just to remind you here are the steps again. You've been successful with the, with the interview with James, your heart, your first, the first hiring manager. Um, for the next interview, you'll be required to do this. And just remember after that, you've, you'll have an interview with the CEO if you're successful with, with James, right? Makes sense. And then do that with the next process and next process. And then when, when the CEO's done the interview, same thing let the HR reach out and say, hey, congratulations, you've been successful. Or even just to say, hey, we're just looking at the five or six final candidates, just bear with us and stay in contact. That, that's pretty much it. Just underline that process so it's crystal clear to the employee. When they become onboarded, now I've, I've had different sides of the coin. I have a one, one side of the coin where I was just given a laptop when I was given a job. Here, hey, Matt, here's your laptop. I'm like, great, um, where's training? Oh, you're flying off to San Francisco. Oh, that sounds great, great. Off to San Francisco, I had one of the best training sessions I've ever had. And um, after I came back, I was like, okay, so, you know, what, where, where are the training courses? Where, where's the stuff to jump on? And I've come from an organization where they spoon feed you to an organization where you're supposed to be an entrepreneur. And, you know, here's your laptop. There are all the links. You go off and, and, and start learning. And it's like, wow, in a minute. I'm not used to this. So, so, so every employee is different. So you've got to make sure if that particular employee you've brought on board, even though you've been looking for an entrepreneur employee, they may still need some guidance. Give them a step-by-step -step guide to follow. And that might be all you need um, for, for, for that particular individual, okay? But for onboarding, uh, the other side of the coin for me, I, I've joined a massive, large financial global company and their onboarding process was second to none the best I've ever seen. Every step was accounted for. It was probably a little bit too much, but, you know, in my opinion, it was never too much. I just felt so comfortable in the process. I knew what I had to do. Um, I knew who I had to meet. Of course, after, after you know, two, three, four weeks, I got to the point where I'm like, hey, guys, I'm all right. I'm by myself now. Um, you know, I'll reach out if I need anything. But that, that was perfect, okay? So just make sure you document everything for onboarding. You need to understand, you know, here's your, you know, when you first arrive in the office, this is what you'll do on day one to day two, or day one, sorry, day one to day 10, or day one to day 14. What does your first 30 days look like, okay? Document that for the employer. So I hope that helps. If anyone has any more questions? No? Okay, 
no worries. Well, look, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'll send the slide deck to everyone involved in the presentation, and I'll also send the recording um, to everyone as well, so you've got that to hand. Really appreciate